Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're all having a great day. We've got a day two of the $3,500 WPT main coming up and I'm coming in as one of the top 10 chip leaders of day two. So really big day and you might be wondering, how do I prepare for such a day? Well, I played some WPT Global right before this. Uh, one, it's a really great confidence builder. Um, one, because well, the games are really good and two, because I may or may not be up over $100,000 in the past week, which is kind of insane. So I've been live streaming some of the experience, but if you are in a country that WPT Global serves, feel free to click the link down in the description below, hop in the games, um, winning a lot, swinging a lot, and it all makes some very entertaining and fun poker experiences. On top of that, they've got online tournaments, which is awesome. So um, part of a global series festival going on right now, there's WPT Prime Online Championship happening. Click the link down in the description below. If you're outside the US in a country that WPT Global serves, use the code Rampage for a $1,200 deposit bonus if you deposit up to 1200 bucks. Anyways, enough of the plug. Top 10 chip stack coming into day two. It's a really big sweats we're on the way let's try to bink this thing for over one million dollars for first place there's 765 players left entering day two 287 of us are going to make the money and i've got a top 10 chip stack let's get into it here we're in level 12 and i pick up ace king offsuit in the hijack early position player opens things up to 10,000, which is a pretty large raise this player looks like a recreational and you know trying to reduce some variance against a player like this I decided to just make the call and slow play my very big hand. I make the call, the button calls, and small blind calls. We're going multi-way to a flop, which comes king, queen, jack, rainbow. Top pair, top kicker, but a very connected board. One where ace, king doesn't actually love the situation. So when action checks all the way around to the button player, he throws out 15,000 and action folds to me. What do I want to do? I have top pair, top kicker. Do I want to call? Do I want to turn my hand into a bluff? And I think I'm just able to make my opponent super uncomfortable by check raising. And check raising here is essentially turning my top pair, top kicker into a bluff. I block ace 10. I think my opponent never has kings, queens, and jacks. And uh, let's try to do it. I check raise to 55,000. A little bit ambitious here, but my opponent quickly makes the call, which may be a sign of how strong his hand is. We're off to a turn, which is the three of diamonds. Brick city here, and I think I'm wanting to continue betting out and pretending like I have a hand like ace 10, the nuts. So I throw out 70,000 into the middle. My opponent's also playing plenty deep. We're two of the deepest stacks at the table here so far. And my opponent quickly calls again with about 200,000 chips behind. Now going to the river, which is a nine, not loving it. If my opponent has a hand like queen 10, jack 10, or king 10, well, now I lose. And I don't think I can really bluff my way out of this hand, ace, king, is i guess a pair and probably not super strong now at this point i don't think my hand is good but i still have some showdown i just have to give up and check and my opponent checks it back quickly with king queen i suck at this game i lose a big one my stack down to about three hundred thousand chips and i know that if i certainly were to pull that final trigger it probably would have worked against top two pair but as played i'm gonna lose this one unfortunately so there's a little bit of a jump in this video as we were in level 12 all the way increasing now to level 15. There's 369 players left. I am car death to the max through four freaking levels. And now moving on, there's a dinner break with under 300 players left at level 16. That's uh, 287. Just came back from dinner break and it was announced that uh, I guess the counting wasn't like, completely accurate and everyone made the money. There's that. I folded for six hours, we made the money. Very nice surprise after dinner break. So let's just go and um, let's just go spin. 1.1 million for first place. Anything can happen. So I guess that's how you do it. You fold your way into the money somehow and let's get going. The second half of this tournament is just getting started. Level 17, I pick up 8-7 of spades in the big blind. There's a hijack open in 20,000. Small blind makes the call and I'm happy to make the call here for an extra big blind. Trying to chip up now that we're in the money. The flop comes queen, three, four, two spades. Flopping the flush draw, I've got eight high. The hijack C bets 20,000. Small blind gets out of the way and folds and here certainly go either way with a raise or call i decided to call against the specific opponent now going to a turn which is the nine of hearts it doesn't complete anything i still have eight high but action quickly goes check check river now comes a queen and 
Here, I actually can't imagine this opponent is going to have a queen here as often as my opponent going to be balanced enough with, you know, checking some really strong hands here on the turn. I don't necessarily think so, but I don't like the idea of bluffing here. It seems like she could have a hand like tens or jacks. So I check it over to her and she decides to bet 25,000. I was all good with giving up with my eight high, but until my opponent makes a very small bet like this, it gives me some bad thoughts, some bad intentions. And I think if she could have a hand like jacks or tens going for thin value, I could certainly try to fold those out. I check raised to 90,000 here, turning my eight high miss spades into a bluff and my opponent isn't happy, ends up folding. Phew, nice. Seven hours of play. Guys, I've literally been sitting here for seven hours. You guys haven't seen it because we fast forwarded and through the power of video editing. I finally win a pot. My stack is up to 400,000, about where I started the day. In the following spot, picking up my first premium after seven hours of play. Pocket queens in the low jack and I raise things up to 22,000 and I immediately get action. The button goes all in for 260,000. I snap call, come on. I can finally have a stack if I win this. My opponent has pocket tens. Let's hold. The flop Oh my goodness is disaster. He drills a 10. I'm not having fun anymore in this tournament and I chip down in a severe manner. This could have been a massive pot to give me close to a million chips. But time to rebuild here from 200,000. I pick up jack nine of clubs in the small blind. There's a plus one raise of 25,000. Two players make the call and so much dead money in the middle. I think of a really great hand to just try to shove and bluff everyone out of there. I go all in because... What else are you going to do? Got to chip up somehow, and luckily everyone folds, and I pick up just an extra 100,000 chips just like that. I'm back to 400k after this hand, and let's get into the, some fireworks in the following hand. Ace, 10 of diamonds in plus one. I raise up to 25,000, and the big blind makes the call. The flop is amazing in 10, 10, 6, two hearts. Lovely, lovely flop. My opponent checks it over to me here. I'm certainly going to fire out a bet as I would with all my weak holdings. So with the strongest holdings, I'm going to bet two for 18,000. And music to my ears right off the bat. This opponent check raises to 45,000. How amazing is that with trips, top kicker? I have the second nuts, essentially. And I'm trying to get it all in here. You don't see this often, but I decided to actually re-raise again on this flop. I click it to 100,000 over his raise. My opponent goes into the tank for quite some time. Tension is high. I'm certainly starting to be nervous and feeling the nerves through his hand as it might be a big one. And he clicks it himself. He makes another raise to 155,000. Wow. I mean, I can't do anything here besides call, right? Because obviously another raise is super, super strong. And I'm hoping he has a 10 and that's it. I decided to make the call for the extra 55,000. I kind of wished my opponent made it a little bigger, but here we are. We're going to a turn, which comes the nine of diamonds. A little bit scary as I do lose to 10, nine, but whatever, so be it. But what's very confusing is that my opponent decides to check after four betting the flop, my opponent checks and I'm a little confused. This action kind of threw me for a loop. I'm not sure what's going on, trying to process what is happening here in this hand with trips and top kicker. How am I able to get it all in? And I kind of think about betting a small amount in this decision, but really I only have like 200,000 left in my stack. The pot is massive and I'm not going to get caught up in this fancy play syndrome. I decide to just go all in and be standard and shove. I'm all in. My opponent snap calls with Jack 10, ultimate cooler trips over trips, river ace. Let's freaking go i have a massive stack now after this cooler and it's always nice to be on the right side of these hands ggs to my opponent here unfortunately but uh you know very nice and it feels good to not give up after losing the big one with queens after being carded for seven hours Whew, this feels really good it's like getting the monkey off my back and here let's start cruising into this tournament now that is what i call an eventful two levels of freaking play played for two hours that time and a lot happened ups and downs and i'm fucking alive holy shit god i needed that so bad it sucks a little bit to to know that i would have over a million chips if 
my queen's held whatever i have 760k right now going into i think the last two levels of the day i think so last level of the day 176 players left it's gonna be a very long tournament three more days of until this like whole thing ends so um, for now that's what's going on and i have chips let's go progressing to level 19 blinds have increased and i pick up ace king offsuit on the button there's a cutoff raise to 50,000. it's a very big raise and my opponent covers me and, uh, you know, I'm not going to go anywhere this time. I'm not going to slow play the Ace King here in this situation. I make it 150,000. My opponent doesn't hesitate too long before making the call. And we've got another massive pot brewing. The flop is Ace King 10. Let's freaking go. Cannot be afraid of anything here with top two pair. She has Queen Jack. Then, once again, so be it. It's a cooler. She checks it over to me here, and I'm going to bet a little bit small, but. Honestly, it's a really big bet considering how deep we are in this tournament. I make it 100,000 and you're not going to believe what happens next. She announces all in. Snap, 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 snap call. We got a hold. There's 1.4 million chips in the freaking middle and she has ace jack. Just have to fade a queen. Come on, let's hold. The runout is so clean for me, and just like that, in a magic of two massive, massive hands, I have almost 100 big blinds with only 160 players left. We literally have a shot at winning this thing. The heat is coming here. I pick up pocket queens on the button. Next interesting spot. There's a low jack raise to 40,000. High jack makes the call. Then the cutoff goes all in for 325,000. All of this action before I haven't even acted yet with queens. With all this action, so many people involved, I'm definitely going to not slow play the queens and I decide to make a raise up to 600,000. It's putting about half of my stack in, essentially verbalizing that I'm all in without actually doing so. Luckily, everyone ends up folding besides obviously the all-in player. The hijack who's last to act folds ace queen of diamonds face up. And here we are. It's awesome to see he folded ace queen because my opponent has ace king the classic flip. And it feels good knowing one ace is dead. The flop comes all diamonds. Oh my god, laughing in my face right now at the guy that folded ace queen of diamonds. He literally would have flopped the nuts and I would have been out of the tournament. Funny how variance works in poker and how luck works. But luckily, I win this flip and stack my opponent, adding more chips into my stack, fading the cooler that my opponent would have flopped a flush. Everything is going my way, and there's no time to reminisce because the very next deal, we're involved again, aces in the cutoff. I mean, back-to-back <laughs> -back premiums. I raise things up to 45,000, and the big blind player, whom I would describe a lazy reg, makes the call. Just kidding about Lazy Reg, my buddy Chapo, he makes the call. That's how he wanted to be known on the vlog. Off to a flop we go, which is Ace, Queen, Nine, Rainbow. Right after winning a huge flip by flop top set. What a life this is. My opponent checks over and I throw out a small bet of 30,000 here. Just trying to milk him in. My opponent makes the call. Turn comes the Ace of Diamonds. And uh, that leaves us with two pairs. Two aces and two aces making quads. How insane is this? Brings it back to a flush draw. My opponent checks, and I decide to slow down and check this one back. I mean, it's really hard to get paid a whole lot of money with quads. So uh, let's see what the river comes. It comes a diamond, so the flush does get there. And when my opponent checks one more time, obviously, I'm going to be betting. That's a decision of how much do I want to bet. And given the action so far, it doesn't seem like my opponent has anything too strong. If he has a flush, then it's very well disguised and unlikely. But trying to make a queen or a nine to call, I decided to bet out 150,000. I'm not going to overbet the pot and get too greedy. I'm going to go for 150. And my opponent ends up saying it was an annoying turn, which is a little tilting because he's kind of announcing that he had queen nine and didn't check raise the flop. Anyways, he says he has to pay and makes the call with exactly that hand, queen nine. It could have been a much bigger pot on the flop. Oh, well, happy to win this one with quads, which is pretty sick. And a nice hand to Chapo for playing it well and basically losing the minimum two pair over top sets. And here, just like that, the stack is insane. The stack is growing. I have an insane amount of yellow chips. And it was a very hot end to day two of this massive tournament. All right, that's a bag. What a day. Hold it for seven hours and uh, we're done. It's midnight. 
and 112 players are coming back for day three. It's going to be a long one. I think it's like there's going to be like five days, six days of this tournament. So uh, 2.1 million. I don't know how many chips that is comparative to the field, but I know it's like almost 100 big blinds. So uh, I'm going to say that's a pretty solid one. That's what we're fighting for. That little, it's not little. Look at how fucking big this is. That's not little at all. Uh, that's a trophy. And I want it. So that's it. See you guys tomorrow. We are here at the beginning of day three. This is the little bit of outdoor time I hope to have today. Uh, there's 107 players left and I have a top 10 stack and I've got chips, I'm alive and I'm hoping for another very, very long day. I hope to not see the outside today because today we're gonna play until the top 16 players. So, you know, yesterday was a full 10 hour day. Hoping today will be another one. I've never run this deep before in a main WPT. I've been to Florida a handful of times now and I have a shot. So um, that's it, hoping to run good. Wish me some luck. Appreciate all the support real time on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. It means a lot. So enjoy this lovely view of this little water fountain. That's hopefully the last we'll get to see of it today. And let's run deep. Cards are about to be in the air. Let's go. You know how I want to start off day threes in a big tournament? It's picking up aces right off the bat. That's right. In early position, I raise things up to 50,000. Player to my left makes the call. We've got action. And the cutoff says the two magical words of all in. A total of 315,000. It's not a whole lot of chips, just over 10 big blinds. And I definitely want to entice the player to my left to make the call as he has over a million chips in front of him. So I want to give him a price. I decide to just flat here set the trap but sadly the opponent folds so we're all in against pocket nines every single pot means a lot right now i just want to hold It's a clean run out with the aces here and I win and stack an opponent right off the bat. It's an amazing start to this day. Moving on to the next level, I've chipped up and picking up queen eight of clubs in the cutoff. I raise things up to 65,000 here and I surprisingly get action as the small blind and big blind player both make the call. They both have about 30 big blinds deep and they're definitely non-pros. So going to a flop of ace, three, four, two diamonds and action checks to me here. I can't really imagine either of these opponents have strong hands here on this board. I think a lot of the pocket pairs that would be sets here are going to shove a lot of the time and also all the strong aces or really any ace is going to go all in too against a cutoff open. So for that reason, I'm going to bluff 65,000 and I get one opponent to make the call in the small blind and he's definitely the player that I would expect to not have many strong hands. So we're going to a turn which is a six basically a brick. My opponent checks here again, and I'm sticking to the same mentality. I'm going to blast out 200,000. If my opponent has an ace, he certainly won't be comfortable as I set myself up for a river shove. And considering that he's capped to not the best aces, uh, he does end up making the call though. So a little bit frightening, a little bit confused as to what's going on, but we're going to a river, which is the nine of diamonds. Now, the diamond draw gets there. It seems like a clear give up at this point as I just have a really bad hand. If my opponent was calling with a flush draw, now he's never going to fold a river shove. So action goes check, check, and he shows ace jack of hearts. That hand doesn't exist here, but uh, you know what? Good for him, good for my opponent. He wins this one. Uh, definitely was surprised to see the strength of his hand, but he wins. Following that, picking up Jack Six of Diamonds in the big blind, the cutoff, who is a very aggressive reg, opens things up to 60,000. Definitely going to defend this. I make the call. Flop comes ace, six, four, two spades, and a heart. I check it over to my opponent here with middle pair, and he bets 55,000. I'd expect him to bet almost all of his hands in his entire range here at this point, especially considering how aggressive this opponent can be. I make the call with middle pair, and we're off to a turn, which is the four of hearts. Very interesting card here as it's one that favors me. It does introduce two flush draws and I actually decides to check even though sometimes I could bet here, but I checked my opponent and he ends up checking back. So feeling good about my hand when the river is the seven of hearts. Backdoor flush completes. It's not something that I think is super relevant at least. So uh, I take my time thinking whether I want to bet or check and I think I just get to allow my opponent to bluff off sometimes. So I check it over to him. 
And, well, he does fire out a bet. It might be a bluff. He might have it, but it's a big one of 365,000. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a very, very big overbet. And this player is known to be crazy and bluff a lot. And I obviously don't have a great hand here. But the cool thing is that I unblock spades, you know front door flush draws that I've missed. Maybe he wants to take a stab at it. Uh, he also could just have a wide variety of like the king, queen, jack, 10 holdings that have now arrived at this river with air. So yeah, I don't think my opponent can have a backdoor flush too often. He's just representing an ace or two pair. And I am going to be non-believer as this opponent has a reputation for bluffing. I call and he shows me jack five of hearts. No shot. Are you serious? <laughs> he goes runner, runner, flush. The backdoor flush that I thought was irrelevant became very, very relevant. And I lost a really big one, made a bad call. But we're moving on, trying to rebound. I pick up kings this time. The early gun player, same opponent from last hand, raises to 60,000. Here, certainly going to be three bidding with a premium. I make it 180,000. And we've got firework cooking. It folds all the way back to this unling on player, and he four bets to 540. We're playing super deep. I had about 1.5, 1.6 million to start this hand, and I'm definitely not going to go anywhere. I decide on a call, of course, with Kings, going to, uh, I guess, kind of set the trap. We'll see what he has. We're going to a flop, which comes 986. Very low, disconnected flop with our ranges, and this kind of board texture doesn't really mean much right now and surprisingly my opponent actually starts off with a check wouldn't have expected that in a four bet pot but definitely with kings here i have to bet for protection obviously have to bet for value if i'm up against jacks queens you know those hands are even like ace king or you know ace queen suited they all have some equity against my kings here so i'm gonna bet small two hundred and seventy thousand to go and my opponent goes all in no way i mean i don't think my opponent has a set ever if he has aces then so be it i snap call and there's four million chips in the middle for my tournament life right now he has pocket kings as well oh wow i did not expect that actually at all. So somehow, you know, a whole lot of chips went in the middle and we ended up just chopping this one up. After this hand, we get into a doozy of a situation with 10-9 offsuit in the small blind. Action folds to me. The big one has about 20 big blinds and I went for a very um, ambitious all-in. Thinking my opponent would overfold, but my opponent ends up tank calling. With ace four of clubs, I have two random cards. I need them to hit and connect it to flip. With 40%, we've got a big pot brewing right now. I lose this one in uh, probably an unorthodox, unnecessary fashion. This one doesn't feel good. Down to 1.2 million now in my stack. And we're moving on to this next hand with king, queen of spades in the cutoff. The early position player, same opponent that I've been battling with. Yeah, the very aggressive pro raises to 80,000. I decided to make the call with imposition with about 26 big blinds in my stack. And we see a queen high flop, not so bad here in queen, jack, six, two diamonds. My opponent starts off with a bet here of 85,000. And I think my opponent could certainly go either way with a better check. And like I said, he's aggressive. So leaning towards the putting chips in the middle side of things, I decided to make the call with top pair. I think raising is a little bit of an overplay and I've just got a good hand, right? Now we're going to a turn, which is an eight. Board um, shouldn't really change a whole lot besides 10-9 becoming a straight, but that's really all I lose to besides being behind on the flop already. And my opponent does not stop betting and he fires 215,000. At this point, I've got about 700,000 in my stack. And here, I think given the reputation of my opponent, once again, I'm going to have to call down and hope to win. I make the call with about 500,000 chips behind and off to a river we go, which is a brick deuce. As dry as it gets, my opponent takes his time before announcing all in and, well, my mind is already made up. I'm going to be committing my stack here when I flop top pair with king queen. I make the call for my tournament life and he shows 10-9. That's the nuts. Not a fun spot to be in. I was running super deep and all of a sudden now I am knocked out of the tournament in 64th place. I'm dead. I'm gonzo. Goodbye. Raw motions right now. I just busted like 10 seconds ago. I would 
be cool with killing myself. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I would like to um, blend into this little wall and just become a wall, but that's it For 16 5 or whatever and um, Played for two and a half days played like shit. I deserve it. I deserve to lose didn't have to call off Probably could have just three bet could have done a lot of different things didn't have to shove the 10 9 a lot of issues But fuck me GG's this is how I genuinely feel after busting tournament without sugar coating it I would like to become a fucking tree now and not be a poker player or a human because busting tournaments deep kind of not low but there's a 25k right now that's going on so i'm just gonna probably hop into that after a little bit but um ggs thanks for the sweat thanks for the real-time support thanks for following on the journey you can't win all of them you can't win every single one